Okay, so we've been booted ready to hit the road and we got off to Anglesey tonight for the National Gamekeepers Association. Spend half my wife, no paps, half my life waiting for it. No paps, please. Yeah. No paps. Yeah, yeah. Right, come on. Let's go. Right, we are in the mid, no, we're at the far end of Anglesey actually. We're at Triada Bay. Knocking up with some old mates. Introduce yourself. Hello, I'm David Wright and I am producing Farming Britain, which this young man is taking part in. So, they're less than young. <laughs> Mat Mat mature. mature. Yeah, we're both mature. Yeah, we're both mature. We're having a little bit of mature red wine. Now, it, it's actually this old git's fault that I'm here. Now, introduce yourself. <laughs> Look, he's not talking. David Poole, you bastard. <laughs> <laughs> he's called me a bastard. Massive respect for this guy. He does a great job. Um, great, you know, what we're doing for Wales and trying to put the shooting fraternity and how we are trying to make sure that we have got a future. And this man, honestly, is working so hard. You don't see him a lot. And I need to put him onto my Facebook page and onto my social media because I hate to say it, he's a bloody absolute legend. And you know when you see my dad that says a spade is a spade? Not in this day and age, I don't. Yeah, he does. Hello, I'm Simon. I'm a friend of David Souters and Liz, and I've been invited along tonight. I've been working for the shooting press since the mid 80s. He's got a long blooming history in the shooting time. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm having a great time. Living the dream. Hello, my name's Steve McWigan. I'm from Central Wildlife Management. I'm also organised the evening tonight with David Souter so we can organise, so we can raise some money for wonderful, two wonderful courses, the Gamekeepers Welfare Trust and also the National Gamekeepers Educational Trust, which I'm a big part of. Um, so please take part in what we're doing tonight, raise some money, donate some money to these great causes and take notes of what Gareth and Dave and the other Dave and myself are all trying to do. And that's to promote what we do in our wonderful countryside, our great sport, our farming, and let's get behind it. Let's really come together and please, please, please back us. Follow me at Cheshire Wildlife Management, follow Gareth, follow Dave. Just give us some support, please, and we promise you, we won't let you down. He's trying to nick my thunder there, boy. And I'm living his dream as well. But we cannot have an evening without... That's wife, loving the pizza, and also living the dream. So, Sir Johnny, thank you very much. Where's the man? Can you call something from the kitchen? Thank you all for coming all this way. Um, tonight's fundraiser is for two very, very important trash attempt. Two very, very important charities. Um, the Gamekeepers Welfare Trust and the National Gamekeepers Organization Educational Trust. Without education, we're going to be stuffed. Um, let me tell you, as this is a fundraiser, a bit about both of these trusts. The National Gamekeepers Organisation was founded in 1997 by a group of gamekeepers who felt their profession was threatened by public misunderstanding. Well, there's no statement. And poor representation. And the Educational Trust was established two years later to promote public awareness of the need for sustainable wildlife management in our countryside, stressing the importance of the conservation work carried out by gamekeepers. The Trust aims to present the true facts about the gamekeeping profession, and he particularly wants 
the young to know what game he was to do. To that end, the Trust is active in putting together a forum of teachers to discuss countryside education and how external organisations could best support the teaching of ecology, conservation and natural science in their schools. Apparently, there is a frightening statistic that 49 out of 50 people claim never to have met a gamekeeper. Nor will they be aware that two-thirds of all rural land in the UK is keeper. Nor that directly or through ancillary businesses, shooting supports 70,000 full-time jobs and is worth the best part of two billion to the UK economy. Or that shooting estates spend over 250 million pounds annually on conservation, which provides habitat, food, shelter, roosting and nesting sites to a multitude of little farm and woodland songbirds, the ground nesters of heath and marsh, and the summer visitors who flock to nest and rear them, rear their young, safe from vermin, in a haven provided by the four, four billion acres of keepered grouse water. Despite the bigotry, bigotry and ignorance of animal right activists, and I'm not mentioning Mr. Packham, <laughs> we have generations of gamekeepers to thank for their vigilance in protecting the vulnerable from being swamped in a sea of adaptive predators. Our green and blessed land would be a very grim and sterile place if it were not for them, and the role of the educational trust is vital for all our futures. Now, the other trust is the Gamekeepers Welfare Trust. And this was funded in 1992 to provide financial support to gamekeepers, stalkers, kiddies, and their dependents throughout the United Kingdom in disability, illness, hardship, poverty, and old age, with a remit to assist young people wishing to make gamekeeping a future. Grants are available at all stages of career, working and retired. People in late in life, life may be struggling to afford, to afford rent, household bills, or require assistance in disability and ill health, while working keepers may be off work through accident or illness. The GWT's assistance encompasses everyone in the household with financial assistance for those made redundant who want to retrain in other fields of employment. Mental health is a balance which can be tipped into an unhealthy continuum by a variety of issues in a work environment, both internal and external. And why not, whilst financial support remains the essence of our work, an equally important element has been the provision of Jamie's helpline, a confidential 24-hour helpline, visiting and follow-up service. The helpline is there when an understanding voice on the end of the telephone can bring into perspective an otherwise desperate or apparently insurmountable problem. Earlier this year, we launched the Check In With A Mate campaign, encouraging everyone to contact a mate and have a chat. A problem shared is a problem hard. And we found back in the foot and mouth days, the, uh, the uh, initiative of RABI and RSEABI, getting people to ring, you know, not set and, um, and a puddle of depression to be very effective as the check-in with the mate has been. Most employees in the field sports industry live in tight houses. And one of the greatest problems facing families is when redundancy or ill health occurs. The trust will provide a safety net of support for as long as it's required and help source housing 
no jobs through our employment register. We're all recruits. There's not any advertises vacancies on behalf of employers and maintains a list of their seeking employment. But the trust can also assist with CVs, job applications, contractual issues and career advice. The Gamekeepers Welfare Trust is a small charity funded year by year solely from grants, voluntary don donations and fundraising activities of various kinds. These enable our chief executive, Helen Benson, and a small but dedicated team supported by a board of trustees to look after over a thousand gamekeepers and their families annually, including beneficiaries. <coughs> now, as you know, we are anticipating Star Magellan in the next election. <laughs> and anyone who believes a socialist government is going to be a friend of the countryside is off their rocker. And certainly not with that evil creature Anderson involved. As you will have heard in the, in the news recently, Mandelson has admitted that the country, that the um, new Labour took a bomb of a million pounds to ban hunting with arms. Um, I wonder how much this one can take. As it is, the culture and heritage of our rural Britain has been eradicated. Coursing is gone. Hunting in Scotland has been wiped out. And uh, trail hunting is a poor, a poor second best to proper venery. And look what's been happening here in Wales. Um, equally bad in Scotland, and I hear today that the second reading of the, uh, of the Morland Bill in Scotland is not looking at all good. Um, the situation for all of us is very, very grim. Um, but there are signs of a fight back. Um, at least we have the field sports channel Right. Which we are hooray, which we didn't know. <laughs> um, there is a new field sports organization called Hunting Kind, um, which has now worked up a legal case for minority protection of an ethnic hunting community. And the outcome of that is looking very positive. Um, it may interest you to know that a couple of years ago, um, the Certi Society, which is purely a, a hunting organisation, had as a guest speaker, funny little chap wearing a skull cap. Everybody wondered what sort of hunting stories he was going to take, tell. But when he got up to speak, he said, I know you're all wondering because I'm clearly a Jew. And as a Jew, field sports, and hunting in particular, is no part of our cultural heritage or religion. The reason I'm here is because I was the architect of the Hunting Act, and there was a sort of an indrawing of breath among the, the hunting supporters in the room. But he went on to say, I'm a parliamentary lawyer. He said, my job is to draft bills. And I, you know, you name it, I've done it. The Equalities Act, the Good Friday Agreement, and of all the bills I've worked on, the one I've been most ashamed of was the Hunting Act, because that was the moral will of the majority of the MPs in the House of Commons forced onto a minority, and we should not do that in a democracy. And it was a very good speech, it went on for some time. And afterwards, um, a chap called Ed Swales, who runs Hunting Kind, went up to him afterwards and said, is there anything in this? Is there anything that can be done? And Greenberg said, if you don't, they will continue, those who are against your way of life. And that covers hunting, natural hunting, venery, shooting, farming, just about anything that matters to us rural people. They will destroy it. And he said, I, I'm a Jew, I know what it's like to be discriminated against. And I believe that there is something that can be done. And with his help, Ed went to see 
a very high-ranking solicitor in London, and um, and from there to a KC, and I believe we can get there because we definitely need to do something. Um, I also wrote before I realised he was going to be here, um, and of course you in Wales have Gareth Wynne Jones, <laughs> oh, who's out there banging, banging in the war drum. Bloody good for you, because that's what's needed. It's time we, you know, when you remember all that wonderful energy there was back in the marching days, when we weren't going to be buggered about by a load of baseball and bolsheviks. Well, that time's back again. Yes. And um, what was the other thing I was going to say? <laughs> yes, I understand that the AFC are applying for protection for aspects of shooting of intangible cultural heritage. Well, good for them, because that's the root. You know, our culture and heritage goes back thousands of years. And when you think of the people that do get protection, good God, any sort of sexual deviant gets protected. Any color, any religious creed. If I put on a skirt and walk down the street, I'd be protected. <laughs> I'd be protected. Um, no. no, I like Gareth's, I like Gareth's slogan, enough is enough. And it is. Um, and personally, I'm looking forward to marching through London again like we did all those years ago. Yeah. Without yeah. 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 Now, I'm not going to tell this, but I'm, I've been encouraged to tell you by the organiser <laughs> that um, we must touch on the media, and the BBC in particular. And um, when Clarissa and I heard that um, the aunties had got around the BBC and they, were going to, they weren't going to make any more programmes, we went and tried to argue our case. We were told that there was absolutely no way the aunties had caused far too much trouble. And Aunt Clarissa was absolutely furious. Muttering <laughs> and grumbling like an old dog. And um, all bloody rare stuck at it grumbling away. And um, that night, we were, we were due to present the prizes of the Purdy Awards at a big event in London. And she was still muttering and grumbling as we went in. And I said, hey, look, wake up, we've got to say something to realize. And she said, are we? What are you going to say? And I said, well, it's, it's about shooting and conservation. So I said, I'm going to bang on about that. And she said, well, I'm sure that'll be fascinating. What about me? What shall I say? And I said, well, why don't you say something nice about the BBC? <laughs> and um, so when we handed over the prizes, I droned on about shooting and conservation. And so now I'd like to hand you over to my television partner, Clarissa Dixon Wright, who snatched the microphone from me. And she was angry. She was to inflate like a t <laughs> <laughs> She kicked off by saying, Your graces, can I refute to you, sir? Your graces, my lords, ladies and gentlemen, when it comes to the BBC, when it comes to shooting and conservation, the BBC show about as much intelligence as three monkeys trying to fuck a football. Yeah. <laughs> 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 That put an end to our career with the BBC. Whatever happens politically, whatever we look for, what we look for in the future, the gamekeepers' welfare trust and the, and the national gamekeepers' educational trust will always need your support. Thank you. It's not every single day you meet your childhood legend, and here he is. Come on, come on, come on! What a speech, mate, what a speech. You're the, you're the future, yeah. Look, I, I watched you and Clarissa years ago. What a bloody program. You know, they, this is what you know, real life was about. This is what um, you know, hunting, shooting, fishing, farming was all about. How, how do you feel today? Where have we gone? Where have we gone wrong? Today? Why do they not let him take a part of the match? It's just a lie to look the way. And there was nobody, nobody trampling on the course.
No, no, no. Listen. We need the champion. We need you. That's not me. Oh my god, so I'm too bloody old for that job. Glory. You're scarcely off the deck. The bad of me. Love this guy, honestly. It's you and Ed Swales. Ed Swales, what a guy, what a guy, and you know, it's been a privilege to meet you tonight, and well, it's been just... a privilege, I was thrilled when I heard you were here, it's funny, I'm going to Johnny for a minute, legends in the making, just, just, just take the picture, okay, so, we're, we're, we're talking to the organisers of the evening, and here's the man himself, introduce you, stay, you don't go away, we need you here now, come on, tell us, <clears throat> Why did you organise this evening? We organised the evening because I thought the Welfare Trust and the Educate... Educate... You didn't have to sit on me. I'm not to be honest. There's an that. elephant in the room. Well, hey, right. I said the <laughs> What do you mean in the room? <laughs> squirrel balls, that's what it is. Um, no, I just thought it was something we could do to help. Yeah. This I, is I, important because, you know, we've had some great speakers here tonight. It's yeah. been... It's gone well, has not it? Fabulous food. Great location, and it's all about making sure that we're educating people about what we're doing. The, the, the funny thing is, lots of people have said, "Well, why are you doing it? What's what's?" I said, "I'm not doing it for a reason. I'm just doing it because it's something I can do to help." That's it. That's all. Do you know what? That's just simple and just kind. An absolute gentleman. Yeah, yeah. absolute gentleman. Yeah. I was introduced to David twelve, about six, eight months ago. Yeah. And since yeah. then, the idea was was brought to fruition from Yes, them. it was, yes. Um, you have worked tirelessly. I've added nothing what you could. What I could. No, Headaches. Did, yeah. Um, it's, it's been well worth it. It's been well received. And at the end of the day, it's about the future of our way of life, the future of sport. Yeah, our, 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 what, I, what I wanted to do, I wanted to make it more than just about people who shoot or people who are gamekeepers. I wanted to connect that with farming, with food production. With, and I know I joked about it when, when I was speaking, but the, we're butchers here. Baker, there was butcher, a baker here. And, you and I would have had a candlestick maker, but, yeah. but she couldn't come. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, but that's seriously. I, I know that's a, 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 a joking way, yeah, yeah. way of putting it. But it's important because all of their life, there are, there are vegans now saying you shouldn't keep bees. There are vegans now saying, there was something, I don't know whether any of you saw this. You did, because we talked about it. Yeah. Um, it's now eco-unfriendly uh, eco to grow your own food. This is the society the we are living in. And do you know what? Absolutely. For an evening in Anglesey, in a fantastic little hideaway, oh, it's been amazing. Little family place. Yeah. I, I know the family. that oh, they, they, I, I never even thanked them, and I meant to. A small family, Look. a small family place. Yep. Um, and within that family place tonight has been one, uh, been a voice of one big family. Yes. And a big family that's willing and wanting to put their arms around the whole country. Yes. And there's a few bad eggs want to stop us doing it, and it's got to stop. It has. Good. There you go. Thank you. The voice of the nation has come from here, Triada Bay, in a lovely location. Good food, good people, good company. Thank Not you very much. Not Not